Good morning. Welcome to our online lesson for electric fields. This is the last lesson in the static electricity project. And if you took the packet home for the snow days, the last lesson on electric fields is printed in the packet. So today I'm just going to go over a few of the slides with you and explain the last homework assignment that goes with lesson six and hopefully get you guys ready for our test this week. So if you visit the slides, the lesson is actually linked in the slides as well as some online resources that you might find helpful. So let's talk about electric fields. We've been talking about electric charges, how forces can act at a distance, and the last thing we talked about was Coulomb's law, which explained that forces get stronger when charges get stronger and when they're different distances away from each other. So many of you have probably seen this before. This is a bar magnet with some iron shaving sprinkled around it. And what this allows us to see is the invisible magnetic field lines. Now we feel the push or pull from magnets, and these are the invisible lines that creates the push and pull. Now I don't have any cool demonstrations to show you the invisible electric field lines that exist around charges, but it's pretty similar to this picture of the magnet with the iron filings. So today's lesson involves you reading a portion of the physics classroom and studying it carefully, not only for the things that we've already learned, but some new things to help you really understand why static electricity is considered a non-contact force. So here's some things that you need to know about these invisible field lines, okay? From what we know about these field lines from physics and studies and science is that field lines always leave a positive and enter a negative. So this would help you explain why positives and negatives are attracted. Field lines leave a positive and go into a negative. Now drawing different particles um, with different densities of field lines around them would explain how much charge or the quantity of charge in coulombs this charge has. So it doesn't matter if these are negative or positive. Charge A has a lower density of field lines coming from it. And charge C has a much greater density of field lines coming from it. So charge A has fewer coulombs than charge C. So these actually are positive because the field is leaving. You could draw it differently to make it negative. So what happens when charges that are the same come into contact one another? Well, the repulsion is actually the bending of field lines. And I had this fun little video from Ghostbusters for people who've watched that before. It's funny because they say don't cross the streams. Field lines can never, never, never touch or cross each other. And that's the feeling of repulsion you get from magnets. It's also the force of repulsion that you feel between two positive or two negative charges. And the field lines don't ever cross, but they kind of have a way of connecting um, or flowing from one charge to the other when the charges are opposite. So field lines can never cross each other and they can never touch. If you're interested, this Field Hockey Interactive will give you a chance to play around with different field lines. And this is at the physics classroom. You can add different charges into the field and try to get the little blue dot to go into the goal um, if you're bored today. That's fun. You can add in different fields. And what I'd like you to do is get ready for the test by completing our last activity. So the lesson six lesson plan looks like this. You can do the warm up if you'd like. Here's a link to the reading strategy. There is a really cool crash course video that's about 10 minutes long. You'll find the link to the field um, hockey interactive. And then if you're really bored, you can learn about how static electricity and lightning are related. The reading strategy is pretty simple. You have this on paper in your snow day packet, but you are asked to highlight. Um, you can do this with paper and pencil, it's fine. Um, and look for things that we've learned, concepts within the reading that help you explain contact and non-contact forces, and the electric field concept. I really like the stinky analogy because that's really a real world example of how electric fields work. I won't spoil the surprise. If you do this on paper, you can turn it in on paper. There's also a place in Echo for you to turn it in. And here's a bonus. Anyone watching my video today, 
on YouTube, if you post a comment saying something that you learned from this video or from lesson six, I will have a Valentine's treat for you when we return um, to school. And if you get done with lesson six, go ahead and work on your study guide, study your pretest, and we will see you um, next time in class for the project post test. Have a nice day.